Hey now, it is Wednesday. Hey, is West my mic up? Coast is Wednesday. my mic up? Let me check my mic. My mic sounds nice. Yes, check one, one, two, one, two. Okay. <laughs> West Coast Wednesday. What's happening, everybody? You are tuned in to Girl down. Chat Sports with Mo and Mel. Hey. Hey. What a fabulous Wednesday because this is an exciting episode. I know. Uh, you know, first of all, busy, busy, a busy, busy episode, <laughs> but we're going to get right into it. Uh, I hope everybody is tuned in. Sorry for the delay, but it's worth the wait okay yes. we've got a great great guest that i'm super super surprised and honored to have in the studio um we have mr jay schrader who was a former raider by the way let's raiders. just say raiders, the the raiders. raiders. yes we go. former quarterback for the raiders the los angeles raiders when they were doing their tenure in uh, la um so raider nation if you're out there stand yeah. up Share, share to the Raiders groups because we got a fellow silver and black right in the building. Jay, welcome. Thank you. Thank you yes. for having me. Welcome. I feel so honored to have you on right now. Like, oh. this is just giving me chills because you're my first official Raider I've ever met. <laughs> oh. Okay? Uh-oh. So, it's, it's more You've got a come. lot to live There's, up to right I now. Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know I was in the pressure cooker. Oh, this no. is something here. I don't know. <laughs> You just recently moved here because we were thinking that you were away. And I thought at one point you were currently coaching at uh, Desert Hills High School is what I had read. Right. So, uh, I was. Okay. But now I've moved down here. So uh, I've, I've come down here to do a little bit. Of, I'm an ambassador for Westgate. Uh, oh, okay. And I'm a liaison with them between the Raiders doing a bunch of things with the, with the stadium, with the practice facility, watching them go up. Uh, and all that doing they did some tours over there and, uh, with them so uh it's got my hand in a lot of things you do i do that's exciting I do. though i i try to i try to find work that really isn't work you know yeah. and it like today it, you were golfing well i had to, you <laughs> right. know it, tough like, gig. like i was saying i had to do the press conference and then go play golf so that was a tough day <laughs> you know so, like somebody's got to do it it sounds like easy work though to me it really <laughs> it, does you know what I, I enjoy it it's a lot of fun i love meeting people and getting out and uh seeing different people and meeting different people from all around the country and it's just great so i love, I love it. it i love it too and shout out to the westgate because um mel and i were there actually just last week because they do a thursday night fights yeah and mm -hmm. shout out to ryan reed from reed's boxing gym because we attended that and we actually had a guest on our show who just turned pro who just debuted his pro, shout pro out fight to Alex. So ATG. Sh yeah, shout out to Alexander Thiel, neighborhood champ. He won by unanimous decision. Awesome. Now, when they start out pro, they go four rounds, yeah. which takes a lot of stamina. It's just yeah. like all of that. But great fight. Nonetheless, we had a really good time. Uh, so shout out to him. And then you had something today related over by Westgate, correct? It was a golf tournament that you were involved well, we, in. Well, we kicked off today our the, the inaugural Westgate Celebrities sure. Club Golf Classic. Okay, so, perfect. Um, we're going to do it the weekend of the draft, so it's going to be a whole event uh, during the entire draft starting Thursday night with a party, Friday pro -am with another party Friday night, and then on the weekend we're going to do a 36-hole celebrity golf tournament. And we're playing for 200 wow. grand. 200 so, grand? 200 for, grand for, for, a, for, for the celebrities. Oh, okay, wow. To play in this golf tournament. Uh, so that's Saturday and Sunday. And then on Saturday night, we're also going to host a concert, a private concert over oh. at the Westgate. So uh, if you if they come in and the people mm. that, you know, come in and sponsor and be a part of it, it's going to be a whole week, you know, a four day event. Who's and, performing? Got you. Uh, they're still trying to, to pick out who they're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, they're doing a little 70s rock oh, type thing. Oh, nice. You know? Okay. And so uh, I think that's the way they're going to go with it. So we'll, once we find, once they get that nailed down, I'll be happy to share that with you. But yeah, I please know, let us know. I know they've thrown out a couple of names, but we can't say for sure okay. who they are. Okay. Okay. Well, but, then uh, we'll just. We'll just be but surprised. It's, so it, it's three nights of partying, and then on on Saturday and Sunday, um, the celebrities and athletes and everything else are are going to play for two hundred thousand dollars in a in a PGA Tour event. So yeah. today was kind of like a rough, like a like a walk through. For well, what's yeah, today come, was kinda, today was to today was the major all hyped up. Yeah, for today it. was the major press release to to announce it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're about two months out from the event, uh -huh. and uh, you know we. We wanted to make sure we threw our hat in with everything else going on that week here in Vegas. So, why not? And there's so much going on there's now. There's always a like, lot like going on. This weekend, you've got NASCAR. There's um, the, well, the, the first the spring training games are coming. Right. There's the first week of those next weekend. And then 
We got the fight. The fight. Got that. The, got the fight. Huge you fight. got big fight. Well, you got the caucus in town. Yes, Obama's pres- in town. The debate was tonight. Right now. Yeah, the debate was tonight. Yeah, president, president's in town. President's yes. in and out of town and mm-hmm. coming back. So, yeah, you know, just a couple of things a going on. A lot of just stuff. Just a couple of things. Right. Yep. A lot, a lot going on. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about you, okay? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> um. Well, first I want to ask, um, uh, when you're talking about the celebrity golf classic, which celebrities are you speaking of that will be participating, or who showed up today as far as the well, um, today, walkthrough. today it was myself and Brian Erlacher, Hall of Fame linebacker oh, yeah. from the Bears. All right, the Bears. Shout out to the Bears. The yeah, Bears. The Bears. On, so yeah, you got like your little... shirt on. There you go. Uh, so he's there, but I know that uh, we've reached out. We've reached out to about 80 celebrities, and I know we've gotten some back. Larry Fitzgerald has confirmed. Oh, nice. Uh, nice. To come in town. So uh, we'll have a Mark Mulder, baseball player. Okay. Uh, who's an extremely good golfer. Uh, he loves to play in these things, so he's going to come. But we've reached out from... Major League Baseball to the NHL to the NFL to NBA, uh, those type of guys and some celebrities. You know, we have an invite out to Larry the Cable Guy to make it a little fun. And, oh, that would know, be funny. Oh, wow. So yeah. any anything that you saw up at like Tahoe or the Diamond yeah. Resorts, th- those are the guys that uh, okay. are going to come around because they all come around. Now, are these on guys the really coming to play like they're, you know, they're all legit. in? They're it's legit. happening. It's oh, not yeah. like I was at top, like me, I'm at top golf, like woohoo, kicking it away. But no, these they're are legit, legit playing. Solid. Okay. The, these All guys right. these guys are legit that i mean they they do these tours to make mm-hmm. a little cash okay yeah, so they're coming in to win do so, they bring their own caddies yeah. or oh wow yeah. serious so stuff it, it, that's what i'm saying it's a it's a pga tour event we have okay. a pga official running it so we've got to walk 36 we've got to have caddies and everything else so it it's the real deal how long have you been golfing for <sighs> I've been golfing for about 30 years on and off around my surgery. So, you know, <laughs> okay. rehab time, you got to take a little time off. Right. But that hasn't stopped me. So 13 surgeries and all and still going at it. Hey, can't beat that. Can't beat that. And shout out that you can do that. Shout <laughs> out to all the golfers out there, especially my dad, mainly there you because go. he's, it's his retirement, which has been for quite some time. He's been golfing. Well, I tell people all the time and they go, why do you golf? And I said, because golf courses are some of the most beautiful places. They are. They really it's unbelievable. Are. And know? I didn't realize how addicting it is. I mean, oh. it's to the point where you want to go. drive you crazy. Yeah. You want to go and hit balls. You want to just go out there every day. I mean, it's all of that. Yeah. So here's a question. And this is one thing that I have a question with is I have a hard time trying to go out there and golf because I feel like I'm always trying to. I played softball a lot when I was a kid. So right. I always feel like I'm trying to swing it like a bat. So did you, I mean, because you played baseball growing yeah. up. Did it? Was there a transition point where you had to kind of like relearn the whole swinging process? I did, and but I took a lot of what I did in baseball. You know, it's just hand-eye coordination. Mm-hmm. The bottom line in golf is very simply this, and I've got to see a bunch of the tour pros, the old guys, the young guys, and everything else. Everybody swings different. Mm-hmm. There's no perfect swing. The key to golf is, can you repeat it? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you can repeat it, then you know where it's going. And then mm-hmm. you just, that's how you play. And that's the key. You know, everybody's got a little bit different. You know, I look back and, you know, a guy like Lee Trevino, everybody would have laughed off the thing. But he repeated his swing. And yeah. He was good. Jim Furyk, nobody wants to swing like Jim Furyk. I mean, you know, come in and out and the way he swing, my back hurts just watching him, you know, <laughs> try to do that. But it works for Jim. So you have to find out what works for you, what you can repeat, and then go from there. Well, and like adjusting your swing to the club. I know for me, I'm just hitting driver. Like that's just give me the driver, and I'll just hit it. And you that's just want to whack it. Huh? That's all. Like, yeah, I don't. Yeah. There, there's no technique for that, me. It's just like that, I just want to swing it. If I hit the ball, I'm happy. I think like, let me just hit the ball. I think she has some aggression issues. <laughs> she, but she's yeah, just, she's yeah. just trying uh, to get there's, out. There's, there's, there's that child of a deep into yeah. male soul. I feel like she said she wants to whack it. It's yeah. almost like she was playing whack a mole. She was hitting the balls aggressively at the arcades too. Yeah, yeah. She's trying to get some aggression out. That's all it is. Well, well, you know, hey. better that than other way. Better yet right? on the golf course than anything. <laughs> yeah, right. It's cheaper than therapy. Hello. Right? <laughs> well, like, it depends on probably what golf course you're at. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Well, good. No, so it's very relaxing. I love being out there and I love being outdoors. And uh, it's also a challenge to, you know, see this little white ball and try to get it in that and little hole. And try to make it happen. Yep. Wow. So one of the questions I had asked or that I wanted to know, too, is, you know, in these days and times we've seen, because you were a quarterback and you did play baseball, and we see a lot of these current quarterbacks right now that have played baseball or may have been drafted initially as well right. too and they're and they have this high intense run game and it's all about the the wild throws and the yeah. running games and do you feel like 
that's something that's being, you know, obviously it's been happening with Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, uh, right. Kyle Murray. Is that something that you think has been helpful for these guys in playing with another sport? Or do you think it's something that just they have natural talent that's just kind of developed? Or? Well, I've, I've been a high school athletic director and a high school coach for 20-some years and everything else. You need to play multiple sports. Mm -hmm. Do not specialize. Okay, you, heard it here. you you get a you yeah. get in a groove and it's just not good for you. Mm -hmm. Be balanced. Be a multiple sport athlete. Um, you can learn a lot of different things that really help you and you grow. Yeah. Uh, and to do that, so I was always a big fan of you know doing multiple sports. And you're just seeing these guys nowadays that, that the them. game has changed and everything else that they're allowed to do more. Gotcha. The rules of the NFL are such now where the athletes can be athletes. And do what they, yeah. You know, it wasn't like back in my day that we weren't athletes. Because, you know, Steve Young and John Elway and, you know, these guys, they could run. Okay? And we could all run. Yeah. But the game was built different. Right. The game was built different and it was played different. And the rules, the way they've adjusted it to make it a more viable product on TV has been great because you see great athletes and you're, they're allowed to be great athletes, which is a lot of fun to watch. Now, I don't know if you are aware of this, but uh, they just made an announcement tonight um, with uh, the NFL and the CBA's uh, new agreement as far as extending not only the weeks of football, but also extending the amount of uh, teams that can it, join into the playoffs. Plus. So it basically takes the wild card element out of well, it a little bit. From what I saw, there's going to be seven in each division. Right. So there'll be only one team from each division that has a bye. And then there'll be three games on that wild card weekend instead of the two. So I think it's just another way to get another team into the playoff scenario, which is good. It looks like they're going to expand to a 17-game schedule. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it, that's all better for television. That's well, what, that, that's for, what, that's what yeah. drives the game. So right. you, have to, you have to look at it that way. And, and I'm all for having one last preseason game. Oh, amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Preseason's pre the worst. Yeah. You know, the first game of the preseason, you're like, right. oh, right, great, we're all but back. Then you're but three then you're more, like three, like, uh, and then the fourth. Right. And then by the fourth, no one's playing. Well, no one's playing because you don't want to get them hurt yeah. for the start of the season. <laughs> right. And, you know, so you're throwing these guys out there to play this game, and you're pr everybody in the front office is praying they don't get hurt because yeah. they know they want to get rid of they them They know the next something's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. You know? Because you can only keep so many. So why go, go through that? you know futility of going through that exercise you, oh yeah you already sure. know let's yep. cut it down and make it go and uh so i think it's a good thing that's wonderful so you played at you went to ucla i did played there and then you uh went pro and then the first team you were with was with the washington redskins correct and i want to talk about that really quickly because they're having some kind of dysfunction as far as <laughs> You know, the that team, is not a even for nicely. the name, I'm that, trying to be nicely. nice, but that not is a gentle name, way to just, say it, not even just for the name controversy alone, but just within the organization. What do they need to do? Do you think to kind of get, should, it should I be honest with Please you? Please be honest, but no swearing. If you have to, you will just it out. <laughs> okay. What they need to do is just have the owner write the checks and shut up. Okay. Ooh, okay. All right. He meddles way too much. Uh, okay. We know and, about meddling owners. I feel yeah. like somewhere down south they got a meddling owner that yeah. kind of interferes a lot too. Right. So he needs to just back off. I think they made a great hire in Ron Rivera. Okay. And if they allow him to run the organization and take care of the football side, I think they're in the right direction. Uh, but Dan Daniel Schneider, I'm sorry, he just it hasn't been good. Not he, good. He's tried to meddle with things, and it just hasn't been good. So, uh, and I go back there every year to the, the reunion, and it's just, it's a sad state. So, I think Ron Rivera is a great hire yeah. in D.C. I don't and think he should have been let go even when he was a Carolina, I, honestly. I don't think so either, but, but here again, you know, here's my take. Any coach that's, you get to that 10-year mark, and, and it gets old. Right. You, you need a fresh, you need, you need something fresh. So, I, I get that. Uh, the guy that can the coach in one spot for twenty some years, the Shuskevskis and all that, it did mm -hmm. more power to him because you know it. That's a grind. Yeah. And you know, yeah, you get to be in the same place, but man, some of those it gets old hearing the same things all the time. But you know, so more power to him. But I think Ron Rivera is a great hire in Redskins, and uh, hopefully he can get it turned around. What is, what is your feeling? Because we, before we let you go, mm -hmm. we, we enjoyed having you here. Now that you've got your events that are coming up for the NFL draft, what's your thoughts about, well, you know, just A, with Las Vegas finally having a team here, and then B, the draft coming to Las Vegas, having been part of the drafts before. 
I mean, what do you expect and what do you feel is going to, you know, kind of, I guess, be the calling card here for that? Well, well, here's my thought on a, on a team finally coming to Las Vegas. We've all known forever and ever, Las Vegas has been the center of the sports capital for everything. I mean, the, let's be honest, okay? Mm -hmm. Everything comes through Vegas, right? Right. Um, and I really have to do, give a shout out to the NHL and to the Knights yeah. for being the first team to step out and say, hey, let's go. Well, not only that, but I got to give a bigger shout out to the people of Las Vegas embracing the Knights. Oh, yeah. And, doing what and they become did. a hockey town. And become a hockey town in the middle of the desert. Right. And just the way they've embraced it. Now you got the WNBA team yeah, here. Now you got the Raiders team coming. Mm -hmm. I think it's phenomenal. I think it's a win-win for everybody yeah. and all that. I think the draft is a spectacle, which is going to be phenomenal here in Las Vegas. You know, they're going to walk across the the fountains out there in front of the Palagio. I know. These it's little just, boats are going to pull up to I'm this so railroad. They're, they're, yeah. they're actually building a walkway. Right. They're going to build a walkway so they can walk in front of it, oh, and they're going to bust them over to Caesars and everything else. So I can't wait to see this but, happen. But, you know, the, the people that I've talked to, you know, they say on any given weekend there's 300,000 people here right. in Vegas, and they expect another 500,000 coming for the drive. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So being downtown, it's... <sighs> It's going to be a zoo, but it's going to be fun. Oh, it's going to be a great zoo. Oh, it's going and, to be a and, great zoo. you know, the Raiders are the host of this whole oh, yeah. thing. So well, not only will they have a set-up area over by the link for the Raiders, but they'll have their trophy room where we'll see our three Lombardi trophies. Right. Uh, and, and here's the thing that, you know, is really exciting because that'll be the first time that anybody will hear Las Vegas Raiders. Yes. Officially. Yes. When, that'll be pretty so amazing. When, when the commissioner comes it. out, and, you know, it says you know the well and especially yeah. for these people that have been born and raised in, oh, the, yeah. in las vegas yeah yeah it'll be it'll be something special so uh it's going to be great to be a part of it and it'll be a lot of fun that whole week oh, so uh with you after that whole thing with the washington team that you're playing with you went on to a better team <laughs> which was the los angeles raiders yes. uh raider nation let's talk about it a little bit um as far as your tenure there what uh, was some of your biggest highlights that you liked and what were your your dislikes? And as far as the fans go, what did you think as far as how those fans will transition over to here in Vegas? Will it be that same energy or do you think they kind of are not going to be here or what do you think? Well, as far as the fans, let's address that to, yeah. be, to begin with. Um, the fans in L.A., you had your hardcore Raider fans mm -hmm. just like you had in Oakland and everywhere else. They're going to be the same. They're going to show up here in gotcha. Las Vegas. No no. No doubts about it. Okay, they're coming. Raider Nation is coming. The other fans in L.A. wanted to be entertained. Okay. Entertainment capital. That's what they want. Right. So they could come and go at different times. If you played well, they show up. If you didn't play well, they didn't show up. They were they were that tight. Um, so we we're very fortunate. We had a lot of good teams. We made some runs. We got to an AFC championship game. Mm -hmm. I stunk that game. I get it. You know, it was a bad time. To Any have given bad, Sunday, right? Right. right? It was a bad time to have a bad <laughs> game, but you know, and uh, and all that. And I heard it from my kids at the time that were six and eight. And you're like, hey, Dad, why are you throwing it to the other team? Hey, it's not because I wanted to, you know. Right. But, uh, it, it just happened. So, uh, you know, but the Bills were very good at that time. And, you know, we were playing in Buffalo. So a lot of things had to go right. And yeah. it, just, it just didn't. Um, so that was th that part. I love being in L.A. I went to high school out there. So it was fun to go back. I got to play. And my family got to come to the games and all that. So it was, it was a blast. You know, awesome. So, you know, and I got traded. Uh, I got traded to go out there to play, play for Mike Shanahan. You know, unfortunately, Mike Shanahan and Al Davis had some disagreements on how the game right. was supposed to be played. Al wanted the ball to be thrown down the field all the time, you know, throw it as far as you can. And Mike wanted to use sideline to sideline. So and then Art Shell came in and uh, ran good old Art. Good old Art was good there. Good old Art. <laughs> so uh, we got back to throwing it down the field. And that's what I want, also want to talk about, too. It's a difference in ownership with Al Davis because Al Davis was that type of owner, too, where he was very in the mix, very controlling to a certain degree. Put you a lot in the mind of Jerry Jones and what redskins have going on yeah but you there. can't put them there you no. can't you can't put them there for this reason okay okay al davis was a coach that's true al davis coached the nfl yeah, that became an owner mm. football was his business he wasn't somebody else that ran a business that wanted to meddle in football mm -hmm. there, there's a world of difference al davis knew what he was talking about he knew the ins and outs of football he's been there he'd been through the grind he was the coach so when he had stuff drawn up it made sense it's not like hey you know some guy coming off the street that's running IBM for a while. And, hey, let's try, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's try this. <laughs> right, so right. that's how you have to separate it and you have to look at it 
you know, the, the owners that meddle now are business guys that think they know football. Al Davis knew football that became an owner. Mm -hmm. So that was a whole different way of looking at it. And that's why he gets the owl. That's they why the owl. That's, that's why, why, that's why, that's why, that's why that's the allegiance the owl. Exactly. Like we're not even well, saying a legion. I'm saying the owl. That's and, what it is a Raider fan. And, that's what we and you have to understand, not only, you know, was he looking after Raiders, but he was the merger. Yeah. You know, he made the merger between the AFL and the NFL come come together. That's to bring, major. Yeah, to, to bring us to what we have today. So uh, very instrumental in the game of football and, you know, phenomenal guy to play for if you understood that he was a coach. Yeah, oh, you know, that became an owner. Are we having an earthquake right now? I no. swear there was like a maybe, shake maybe, here. maybe it's Al <laughs> saying like yeah, I'm here. He's maybe. like, hey, I'm like, still hey, here. I'm still I can here. feel his presence. I yes. can feel his presence. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jay, wow. thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Oh, you bet. But let's recap the events that are going to have. We definitely want to have you back, hopefully, before definitely the events take back. place. So we're talking about NFL Draft Weekend, which is April 23rd, 24th, 25th. Yep. And then the events 20... will be on what day? Well, the the, or... West, the Westgate Celebrity Classic will run all those days. There'll okay. be a couple of parties on there. Then the, the Celebrity Classic will be on the 25th and 26th right. on the weekend. Okay. The Celebrity Grudge Match with I Lifestyles and all that is going to be on yes. the 24th on that Friday. And there'll be a bunch of guys playing in that. And that's going to be a, a fun tournament, a charity tournament right. you know, that everybody can come nice. out and play with. So there's all kinds of stuff going on. Well, do you want to come on, Max? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, just come, come on. in real quick. Tell us right. about the the grudge match because that was one of my questions I really wanted to know. I'm sorry, you kind of got in a little late, but go ahead and throw these on real quick. That's okay. Come on, Magali. <laughs> I'm out here. Come on. That's all right. Yeah. We just going up tell us a little bit more about the, what the grudge match is going to be. So the grudge match it actually started um, in August of last year when the Denver when Denver played the Raiders the first opening game. Uh -huh. Um. So it's, it's all about the Raiders playing against their rivalry teams. Oh, okay. And so we did a Raiders versus the Denver Broncos, then we did a Raiders versus the Chiefs, Chiefs. Mm -hmm. and now we're doing this one during draft week. Oh, okay. So is it, I mean, it's just, what is it? Is it is golf? It's 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 golf okay. and an after party afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure like if it was like a flag football, if it was something different. I didn't know if well, we, what, what we were talking about as far as grudge. It, Magali's yeah. got a bunch of players coming in for, for the week that she handles and all that. So they'll come in. And uh, uh, who do you all have confirmed? Yeah, we've got Mervin Fernandez. Fernandez. Mm -hmm. Swerving okay. Mervin, Mervin, who caught a bunch of passes. One of my guys. So okay. He's coming. Uh, Doki Williams. Ron no, Brown. Doki goes back to my UCLA days. You wow. know, all that good stuff. So. All right. Willie Galt. Oh, yep. Willie Galt, okay. Yeah, see? Yeah. yeah see? So, That's going to be some legends. So all, all yeah. that will be happening on Friday. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I Lifestyles and Magali will Wonderful. be putting that together. So there's all kinds of stuff going on. So man. The, if you want to get involved, there's no short. Come get involved, man. Okay. Come we get will. We're in yeah. We're and in we want to have you on again right before that, if possible. Yeah. Since we know so that you're in contact. Now, we'll stay yes. in contact with you. Yeah, yeah let's definitely. do. And I mean what I say about the Raiders edition. I want to do a special Raiders episode. Well, that's Have you on. Have some of my uh, peeps on, and we just talk Raiders. Sounds good. And that'll be a time when she goes on another Can trip. Can we have What's some of the team? guys from the Raiders? Mervin absolutely. Yes, oh, yes, yes, we want. Yes. I love to promote Yes, it, so. absolutely. Absolutely. We'll, we'll plan it out. A lot, of, yeah. a lot of them like to talk, so it's okay. Yeah, that's all right. That's <laughs> so, that's so we do. And, and I'm going to listen, too. We I'm just taking it all in. This is, this, this I do, is such I do, an do, honor. I do have one request. Okay. Though. Next time I come, I can't be any of that bulls. I mean, what is that? Can't be. Can be. I know. You you allowed well, that in she, the studio? You know, Michael Jordan's birthday was just and the All Star yeah. was in Chicago. Chicago. I'm a, a long fan. time Bulls fan. She's also a Seahawks fan. We'll yeah. just let it all go. She's from <laughs> Seattle. Okay? Hey, we okay. beat Denver for you. Thank yeah. you. Okay, Thank you. Yeah, we'll that's always that. a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh look, and oh. I've got Steve Largent. <laughs> Steve Largent. I've got Steve, Steve Largent coming down. Steve oh, you do? Oh, we want to bring Steve on. Let's have that. Let's do that. Let's be in the foot of that. Okay. So thank you so much. Really, you bet. Thank you. It's been an honor, and we'll stay in touch. An awesome time. Thank Sounds you good. so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. right. Like, I'm excited. Like, we had a Raider in the right? building, man. A Raider. It's like one of Mo's dreams. It is one. Of, and right? a quarterback at that. You know? <laughs> and we talked off air a little bit about Derek Carr, and he had some great things to say about Carr. And um, where we, you know, I had speculated if we were looking for another quarterback, it'd be Teddy B uh, that could come because people have been talking about Teddy B. And thank you. <laughs> And I was telling uh, Jay how it's it was so kind of shame. like a lateral type of position. <laughs> lateral type of position. And how we, you know, you just don't know what you're going to get with that. You just don't know. No. Um, because their stats pretty much match up. They, yeah. both were round, they both were draft picked in 2014. 
Uh, Teddy B was in first round. Derek Carr was second round draft pick. I mean, their pass rate, uh, passing percentages are exactly like just little percentages off. But they're both exactly the same style of quarterback. I like Teddy B for you guys. I like Teddy B uh, too. Let's get our let's but next I like, yeah, let's, let's keep the show rolling. Yeah, we keep it going. <laughs> Girl Chat Sports, you're in with Mo and Mel. Yes. So without further ado, we have another guest that's about to join us. I'm so excited about this guest as well. I gotta get up and get my cell phone because I feel like I'm lost without my oh, phone. Sorry, because people could be chatting to me and having questions for this next guest. They probably had questions for Jay. And if you have a, uh, what'd you say? I said you could just ask her to hand me the cell phone. I didn't want to say it. I was wrestling up my flow. Oh, okay. Because I was about to get into it. No, I just messed up your flow by. Yeah, you did. But I just wanted to know what you had to say. It's That's all it. good. <laughs> but you guys can call in too to us. Yes. 702-608-3259. That is the number. It's also on the screen. And uh, this is my first time meeting this lovely lady. Both of ours. Both of our but first time. But we've been following her. But we've been fo- I've been following her. You've been following her. And uh, we have a mutual friend who I that shops with me at Nordstrom. Shout out to JC. Hi. <laughs> because I love JC. He's like, that's my guy. Um, sweet guy. He always told me about you. And he was like, you got to meet Rocky. You got to meet Rocky. So I know he's amazing. So I was like, finally, without further ado, we have Rocky Theus. Yes. Daughter of UNLV basketball legend Reggie Theus <laughs> in the building right now in the studio who has uh, you've moved here. By way of Bay Area, so she's new to Vegas, and I'm just super, super, super duper excited that you're here and that you took the time to talk to us. And we wanted to just have this new, fresh face of Vegas that's on Las Vegas now. Shout out to Las Vegas now. Women in sports and women in media. Channel A, sports (laughs) media. Uh, And you co-star, co-host a show on Las Vegas now Mm -hmm. with uh, Laura. Uh, Laura, what's her last girl? Uh, Lindsay. Lizzie, Lindsay, Lindsay, Gert. Lindsay Gert. Lindsay okay. Gert, JC know, Fernandez, yes. and Mercedes. And Martin Mercedes. Martin. Mercedes yeah. and JC in the morning on yeah. 94.1. There's a couple of them. <laughs> Check them out. Yes, that's right. Lindsay. I was you trying to think of I was like, Laura, wait. You I know, know, I, I know I haven't been here long, spot. but. Shoot. You know what? I was thinking Laura because I was, JC's wife's name is Laura. Oh, that makes sense. So yeah. I had that L thing going that on. Makes okay. That makes sense. But without further ado, we have. Rocky. Hello. Rocky Road, as your nickname, I heard. Was. Oh, yeah. That used to be like my old little hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> now, now it's, it's, now it's Rock, Rock in Vegas. Vegas. Rock yeah. Vegas. Yeah. So we changed it to hashtag Rock in Vegas. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, we know who your dad is so, mm-hmm. and all that great stellar stuff. But we want to know a little bit about you. Yeah. Okay. I know with your dad being an athlete, you were also an athlete. You attended UC Irvine. I did. I did. And what sport was that that you were playing? Basketball. Naturally. Basketball. Really? <laughs> naturally, For some yeah. reason, I was thinking volleyball. I did play volleyball okay. in high school. Um, I was pretty serious about it. I was a middle blocker, six one, so it made sense. Um, but shout out to the tall one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Um, but I love that. But I loved it. It was. It's actually one of my favorite sports. But you know, basketball was just called inside you. of me. Yeah, and it it just it was a passion about it that I just couldn't let it go. And I wanted to play in college, so I transferred from my my little private school in Palos Verdes. I'm from LA, mm-hmm. um, and I went to I transferred to Inglewood High School, okay. and I got my you know public school experience right. with the magnet school program on the campus. It was a great little program, dual program, um, and I played for Inglewood, where my dad also played, nice. and I ended up getting recruited and getting a scholarship to UCI. Now, what position did you play when you were playing basketball? Four. I was a four, small four. Okay. Yeah. Because your dad was a shooting guard. Yeah, he could shoot it. He could he could run the floor, shoot. He could play point. He could do everything. I could not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, I was mostly the really athletic, fast, forward. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Our, our center was like 6'5". I was so. going to say 6'1", yeah. and you were the four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. the running gun forward. She was the body. Wow. wow. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So what prompted you to make the move back to Vegas? Yeah. I know um, you were in the Bay for quite some time. Yes. You were working for some stations out there. You were mm-hmm. actually doing traffic for one of the stations. Yes. And then you did a stint working in Reno mm-hmm. for a while, working mm-hmm. for a station there. Mm-hmm. And what brought you back to the Theus in Vegas kind of thing? Well, I mean, I never, I've never lived here. Right. Um, I've always come here my entire life, obviously, for my dad or my family. And then also my best friend, her family comes here once a year and I would come with them. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I have traditions Everybody here. comes to Vegas, yeah, right? I have, yeah. I have Vegas traditions. Um, I haven't, I've never been here longer than a weekend before <laughs> I moved here, which is weird. But um, yeah, so what brought me back was the opportunity I got to work for Las Vegas now. And it was just... It was one of those things. I was back home in L.A. after 
first my first job was in Reno. I was there for two and a half years. I call that my grad school because I did everything in the newsroom. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I went to Good Day Sacramento as their very first um, right? their very first Bay Area resident Bay Area reporter. Wow! So that nice. put me in the Bay, and that was dope. I got to basically had my own show <laughs> in the Bay for Good Day Sacramento. You're like, it Hello. was playing on. Well, it was there was <laughs> nice. a simulcast because it was Super Bowl Fifty, so we wanted to do uh, a whole simulcast. I went CBS. out there for Super Bowl Fifty. Yeah, I was oh, there. We probably cost. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got really. It was just divine how that happened. Um, so I was able to move to the Bay Area for wow. three years. Did that for a year and got recruited by CBS San Francisco, and they made me their morning traffic anchor. Without traffic experience, oh, right. I, was gonna, I, was I say, wanted to yeah. ask you. Yeah. I, yeah. I never mentioned I've done traffic. No, I that was my first time, and you know they when you just believe in someone or you you want someone on your team, you right. put them to the test, and I'm used to that. I, I'm here for a challenge, and I did it, and I did it for a while, and I grew a lot in that position. They made me an anchor wow. in the top. That's five awesome. market at that point. That's you know during that time. That's yeah. major. Yeah, that is really major. Yeah, especially at a young age too. And right. I'm not going to disclose your age or anything like that. But <laughs> uh, you know, 31 in January. Okay, hey, okay. hey, hey, shout out, Bella. Yeah. yeah, man, listen, we don't age for anything. You I know, love it. Yes, we're good. keeping it golden. I love it. <laughs> so, um, since you're here and mm -hmm. you're working on Las Vegas now, yeah. I noticed that you also uh, got to interview quite a few people mm -hmm. just for your short stint from November yeah. to now. Yeah, yeah, it's been we've been busy. Yeah, this, this week. This month alone has been so busy um, with reporting because I also do reporting on top of hosting. I'm their only full time talent. Wow. So I'm okay. in the field live or I'm in the field doing a story or I'm hosting live yeah. in the studio. Oh, my wow. God. Yeah, we've had we've had a lot of guests in studio, outside the studio. It's fun. It's fun. Now, being that your dad uh, used to play for the Bulls and some other teams mm -hmm. um, like Orlando Magic. Uh, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. The Kings. In the Kings. Yeah. The Bulls. The Bulls, of course. The Bulls. the Bulls. Crew neck on. Because you went to an NBA All-Star break. I did. And you went with your dad. Oh, you guys really do yeah, follow yeah, me yeah, on yeah, Instagram. Yes, we do. We're checking you. We're checking you. We're checking you. <laughs> we do a little How, research. Tell us about that. How was that? Because Chicago's cold. And that was just a weird time to have yeah. the All-Star yeah. location be in Chicago. I was like, but it was colder a, than usual, It was I think, very yeah. cold. Yeah, it, it was like minus and some change. Yeah, there was one day where it was like one degree. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's you what know, I'm saying. Like, we were in the crazy. we were in the single digits. Yeah, we were like, like no, we mm -mm. were in the single digits. Um, and I'm from LA, so and I'm there's in no Vegas jacket now. warm enough for that. <laughs> that whole biting cold environment yeah. is not for me. Mm -mm. Um, but it's also really nice to you know grab a cute coat and oh yeah, and bundle up. And, I love cute and, coats. You know, take advantage of some winter vibes because they're mm -hmm. temporary for us, right? Yeah, you know? yeah right. so it was good. Um, I enjoyed it. It was it was quality time. First and foremost, with my dad, um, I was his date. He was mine. Oh, uh, yeah. So we went together, and um, I met some. I saw some friends there, some colleagues. So there was some networking too. Nice. You know, you go to a couple parties, yeah, have mm -hmm. some fun. Um, but the best part about it was being with my dad. And how did that feel when you go to like the Legends games, mm -hmm. and then you go to, the, to, brunch, to the, the brunch, the Legends brunch, yeah, yeah, and see like highlights of your dad when he played for the Bulls and mm -hmm. that kind of. How does that make you feel? Like, do you feel like you still get the butterflies, or feel like so like I can't believe it's my dad or yeah. just kind of that awestruck thing. Yeah, it's I think the stories people tell me are more <laughs> <laughs> are, are more shocking. But no, um, when I see him him playing or a photo, I just I just am overwhelmed with pride. You know, I'm so proud. Mm -hmm. I just look at him like, wow, you really did that. Like you are you really. And I've watched him over the years evolve, too, which is just incredible. He continues to reinvent himself. He went from playing to broadcasting to acting to. So coaching, he mm -hmm. found his passion in coaching and, right. you know, back on broadcasting now. And it's just, I've just watched him evolve and, and I'm just so proud Aww. of the way that he, the way that he's been able to come around full make, circle. Yeah. Make life work for him. Yeah. You know, that's, it's hard as an athlete to, to finish playing and, and figure it out from there. You know? And how was that growing up? Because you have siblings as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he even, uh, as soon as he was done with his NBA career, he went overseas. He played in Italy and yes, all of that. I was there. I was You there. were there for yeah. all of that. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was that like? Like just. I have vivid memories of Italy. Okay. Uh, my grandma was with us. We, oh, nice. Yeah. I went to an Italian school. Um, you speak any Italian? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Just checking. Ciao, Bella. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I was there. Um. And it was just, it was cool. I don't have, I have memories of being with my family out there. I don't have memories of him playing basketball, obviously. Right. 
Um, but yeah, I, I look back on that. I remember him pushing me on the swing in the snow <laughs> and he told me, Rocky, don't let go. <laughs> and what do you think I did? Let go. I let, let go, go and I flew <laughs> across Why the, listen? the snow in Italy. We'll listen. Yeah. Yeah. Test it out. He'll, he'll <laughs> never <laughs> let me live that down. And he'll never let me live the fact that I didn't listen during my basketball career either. You know? <laughs> what advice like, was he giving you in the basketball career that you were not listening oh, to? Oh, man. Practice more. She, you know, he would try to take me to the gym in high school and middle school. And, and I'd be like, no, dad, I just want to go shopping or, you know, like, just, no. just being a, just being a preteen right, or being right. a teenager. And, you know, he, he would always tell me, he would give me the best advice, but he would leave it up to me to listen or not. He always lets his kids kind of do their own thing or, or really follow their own heart. Um, he'll tell you what's right. Right. It's just a matter. Like, learn from your own mistakes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He kind of just lets yeah. you flow. And, and at the end of the day, I respect that because I am my own person. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm my own person outside of his legacy. Right. And I'm building, yes. you know, what I want to build. And, and I have that foundation because I look back like, ah, he was right. And that's how I, that advice that I didn't listen to back uh-huh. then, I listen to now. You know? Well, Does he have tips for you now that you're, you know, here in Las Vegas or because obviously your name your last name is known probably a lot here as well because mm-hmm. of the UNLV mm-hmm. is he giving you any advice as far as the Vegas life or living in Vegas that he, you know oh, <laughs> you know what's funny he actually called me today just randomly <laughs> ran he was in town um when we when we came back from uh Chicago he came to Vegas uh-huh. to um see some colleagues and he called me randomly he said Rocky I love you. What are you doing? Aww. And I said, I love you too. Yeah, I'm, I'm at work. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I just wanted to tell you, you know, I was driving through Vegas and I just want to remind you when you stop at a, you know, when you, when your light turns green, yeah. you make wait. sure you wait mm-hmm. for the other cars. Right. Because and the, they were the on that light. Part of the intersection yeah. because they run the light. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, dad, I, I knew that, but thank you for reminding me. Sound well, advice. You, Sound thank advice. you for <laughs> thank you for reminding me. So there's one thing, you know, he'll be like little well, dad mind things you, like you that. You did traffic for a while, so I think <laughs> yeah. you would know when you no. report accidents. But that is that is a quirk, I guess, unique to Las Vegas. That oh, people have yeah. to be warned oh, about. Oh yeah, right? you do. You do. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he'll do dad things like that. He'll call me with, with that kind of advice. But otherwise, um, I guess his his advice is just to. To have fun and work hard. That's good. That's really, you know, he'll say that more profoundly. But right. in yeah. a nutshell, that's what it is. Well, I think it speaks for itself because yeah. your resume is just quite extensive for the, oh, the time you. that you've done in your career. Thank you. Thank and you. I just want to ask you, too, because being um, a black female in mm-hmm. media mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the journalistic integrity that goes with it. And, you know, there was controversy. I know you've heard about this because you even did it on your segment about the Gail King interview. We yes. talked about it. We touched on it a little bit. We really never got a chance to get into it because so much stuff was going on. Yeah. Right. But right. the uh, Gail King interview with Lisa Leslie, what are your yeah. thoughts as far as that interview goes? And then the questions that you were getting asked personally mm-hmm. from your segment with Las Vegas Now and mm-hmm. being on there. Well, I interviewed her about the Grammys. Oh, okay. You know, oh, right okay. before. Yeah, actually, you, you asked me a while ago about the special guests we've had on the show yeah. she was one of them very oh, wow. recently. Okay. yeah and so we did a satellite interview and we had so much fun our conversation was great uh, we were talking about the grammys and then that bombshell of news happened right and she did her at least the leslie interview and you know i saw the clip and and i was shocked mm-hmm. i was shocked at the at the way or the tone of the interview mm-hmm. um as a journalist, I know that you have to ask those kind of questions. Tough questions yeah. But, you know, you, there's a way to ask them. Right. And granted, the way they edited it might have taken away from her intentional tone. Um, so I, I can't 100% judge it because I haven't seen the full interview. But, yeah, the tone was off and it, it threw us all off. But that's not who she is as a human being. We can't just completely cancel her, sure. you know, as a human and or as a journalist based off of that that's what i believe okay we can't cancel gail king we can't cancel her out you know the cancel culture is very it's aggressive sometimes uh it is we're quick to cancel a lot of things yeah we're quick to cancel and then we don't cancel the right thing right 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 right. exactly exactly but no i i i have a lot of respect for gail king obviously um could the tone have been different yeah 
Oh yeah, yeah. I and those follow ups yeah. were just yeah, super the, inappropriate. And, and that That's is all. What that is all. You know? It wasn't the fact like, that she didn't get ask that you're question. asking the question because right. you know it's Lisa Leslie. She grew right. up with him in LA. Right. Basically, we get right. those. But why were you asked? Why were you following up with these things that were just yeah. so? It was, it was like, like as if there was wasn't an agenda. Combative. It was like almost like a combat. Like she like wanted a reaction. Like she yeah. wanted a reaction. And I'm just like, you don't do that. And 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 that's what I mean by tone. It's it's yeah the tone of your questions and the tone of the follow up questions. It's all you know cohesive and it all kind of seemed like there might have been an agenda but but lisa held her ground she held her ground she Man, handled that so she well did what she, she did yeah. and that. and i and yeah i respect lisa leslie for her response and, mm-hmm. and for basically shutting down any kind of challenging or negative talk about right and you, people always think i think when they think about the journalism aspect is that well you know you've got to get that topic you've got you know yeah you gotta we know we know it was recent we know kobe's death was recent but we still got to talk to somebody about it mm-hmm, let's mm-hmm. make it her but then you don't think about it's not just you know kobe's wife and the rest of his family that are mourning it's the entire world yeah. and especially one of his good best friends you can't yeah. ju- it's hard to just come up to somebody and like let's talk about the beer yeah. that just died i know i thought about how would i <laughs> how would i have dealt with this how well, would i have thrown the question right mm-hmm. in there or the topic in there mm-hmm. without sounding negative now and do you thought, prep for your interviews with your guests like are you saying like i'm just giving you forewarning this is what we're going to talk about <clears> this <throat> is what i may ask you so they're not really set up because I felt like Lisa Leslie probably knew that discussion might go there. Sure. And was prepared mm-hmm. for it, too. Mm-hmm. But not as far some as her answer. She was saying, well, the co-signing like, thing is, yeah, yeah that kind of just throws a thing. But she's a professional. Right. You know, so she handled right. it. Yeah. But do you ever feel like when you have your guests that you have to interview that you're prepping them as well? And you don't yeah. mistakenly throw any curveballs or any of that kind of stuff? I, I think I think it's important to to talk to your guests before you get in there. Also, with our show, you know, sometimes they'll we'll have whole conversations before the right. before mm-hmm. um the actual interview or they'll send in you know a write-up of what they want to talk about and you'll go off of that so really there's no you can't go off yeah you know you no. can't really throw a curveball if yeah. you have an idea of what they're trying to talk about but um yeah and for the gail king interview sh- we were talking grammys so you know you're pretty much prepared for that too right um, but I don't go in with the with the idea that yeah I'm gonna, I gotta I'm get them throw them <laughs> yeah, off. I gotta, I gotta get them I gotta right. get them you know that's not the kind of journalism that that I'm into but good yeah yeah good very good so let's talk about Las Vegas now because it seems like a fun let's show yeah. you and Lindsay and J C and Mercedes I mean they have all balls of energy yes and I know there was one episode I don't know if it was near the Valentine's Day time or it was about the time of the Bachelor show or Uh-oh. Bachelorette <laughs> that Lindsay was trying to set you up. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! That was definitely now. I did think that throw January. you? Did, yeah. Did that throw you? Did yeah. That throw you a little I wasn't bit prepared for yes. that one. <laughs> I figured, you know, I wasn't prepared for that. But that's what happens on the show. Is you just have a conversation and mm-hmm. naturally it goes into what you have to have on the show as a host is quick wit, right? Yeah. You gotta Fast be ready. You gotta be, you know, you gotta be funny. You gotta be engaging. So, oh, she got me. <laughs> she got me with that one and and it was fun because we had been talking about we should do a, you know a dating game or something like that on the show and we, we ended up not doing that because our show was so packed our valentine's day show was so packed with so many special guests yeah. and fun it was great um but yeah no she she said it's time to get you on some Vegas dates, and I was like, uh, I don't know, Vegas dating. <laughs> Vegas is, date is uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. I mean, you guys have been here. You guys have been here. Yes, Let me, warn me. Give no, me some I'm not advice. Warning. I mean, <laughs> what you see is what you get. Oh gosh. I'll okay. just leave it to you like that. Listen. Okay. It, it, it's it's a it's a tough road. But yeah. um, <sighs> now Why is that's that, a whole other. That's a whole other. That's a whole other. I know we're going off. We're going off so much. It's just we're gonna bring you back on. Don't worry. Dating is another kind of sport. We'll have to have a dating. Dating is another kind of sport really. it, is and it really sport. is a sport <laughs> really is. you need to have like a bench you need yeah, to have yeah. like a starter yeah you got your roster really <laughs> they disappear fast they go away uh-huh. they may never be there they uh-huh. could be a, a false impersonation everyone uh-huh. want to come here thinking they're somebody or yep. wanting to be somebody yep. and really not just being themselves well yeah. i would say it's the city now and i'm born and raised here rocky oh, so okay. it's the city now where the um made up of a, mi- a microcosm of ah. degenerates and low lives that yeah. come here and reinvent themselves <laughs> yeah. to a certain degree <laughs> Interesting. but it follows them uh-huh. the trail still follows you can only reinvent yourself so so much so because much. now you come into a six degree of separation when people find out you've moved to vegas and everybody comes to vegas mm-hmm. it just seems to be that kind of yeah. train yeah. 
Yeah. But um, I digress because the dating thing is just. I know. I know. <laughs> my, my, listen, it's a sports show. Shoot your shot. That's all. Oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Just shoot, shoot your shot. And don't miss. And shoot don't miss. Shot. You yeah. know, don't miss. Well, and, that's the thing too. So I think, and then I'll end it at this: is yeah. that I think both male and female have some like some kind of sensitivity to like being turned down. Well, mm. guess what? It's not a big. It's not a big deal. You're like rejected. you just got to deal with it yeah. and move on. Like don't yeah. take it. So I think for like. I feel like that you've come across guys and women that are both like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to shoot my shot because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the fear of rejection. Well, yeah. people get rejected all the time. Yeah, exactly. Keep going. Keep uh, going. That's something they got to work out through their therapist. <laughs> 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 who is your team? Because your dad played professionally first with the Bulls. So uh-huh. who, who's your favorite NBA team? That's what Ooh. I want to get the nitty gritty on. <laughs> and you were at the all-star break and you I saw was. a lot of players and you saw a lot of events. I did. I did. I did. What? My team. I'm from L.A. You got a Laker shirt on. That's I mean, all so I you need understand. to know. That's, that's, that's all she was fishing, she was fishing for. Is she was that what you wanted? For okay, that's what that's I wanted. I, that's what I, I wanted. I love. I love going to and and I don't don't come after me after I say this, but I even love going to Clippers games. Yeah, you know, I, like, I would too. I, it's, they're it's cheaper. Just a, they're cheaper. I'm with it. They're more it's, exciting to watch with the squad that they do have, you know, if you if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. I mean. They are a high flying I'm about circus. To turn act. your mic off. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's listen to where I'm going. They're not more exciting than <laughs> they, the Lakers. Lakers oh my have God, the best they are. The no, we, not. we do. We <laughs> do. One, one and all of a sudden appear real quick. Listen, they are a high flying circus act all these, that won't go Take them down, all down. Take them all down. That will not go anywhere. Can't sit there yeah, anymore. they're exciting to watch for those that think they like high flying <laughs> circus acts. If Kwan would let me finish, because that's what they are. <laughs> and even with the squad that they do have, I don't feel like they're going to get anywhere far. Mm, yeah. Well, you know, Kwan, what do you feel about magic it, saying that they are more, that they have, that they're more stacked right now? They could be stacked all day. We're stacked too. I mean, but magic, you know, magic Johnson, the no, magic Laker, talking needs his phone talking taken about, away at hey. times because he's not the best at tweeting. He tweets everything, and sometimes everything he says Just is saying, not golden. I, you know, what I, I thought that was said like, Lonzo Ball's jersey yeah. is going to be hung in the rafters. Yeah, that, he said that too. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. take magic for what it is. He's not solid as Wade and Colt. Oh man. Now. Um, what about football? I just realized football we're, we're, uh, we're live. Yeah, oh, we're live. Yeah, we're yeah. live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way to the audience. So yes. Fast. <laughs> yes. Um, who's your football team? Oh. You're moving to Vegas, oh, so tread light no. on this answer. Listen, I don't have a football team, okay. so now my football team is the Raiders. Thank you, girl. I got a new best friend in the studio <laughs> right now. She loves the Lakers. I mean, I also lived in the Bay Area, so I've been to Raiders. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank I you. know the energy. I... I love the culture, so thank you. I can I can claim Raiders. Oh yeah, San Francisco 49ers over there, and you also have yeah. Golden State Warriors. And I have I, I respect, love the Warriors. I like the Warriors too. I respect them as Went a to team. Went to a lot of Warriors games. Okay, but I am still a diehard LA girl. Yeah, and and so there's um, a vibe in Staples Center. There that is a vibe. You just can't get anywhere no. else. No, yeah, it's called being late and not cheering. Oh, what? oh. Oh, whatever. Well, <laughs> let me tell you something, too, about these Clippers. You know why I say that also the game seem exciting? Because they're borrowing off of roommates of being sharing in our. Hold on. Uh, real, real quick. We got we got some sounds from Key Arena. Uh, <laughs> well, Key Arena it. has won three championships with the Seattle Storm. So I'm just saying. Really? No, yeah. I did. I met Liz Cambridge, by the way. Oh, you did? I did. I did yeah, at All Star. I yeah. met her. She is so dope. Isn't she, she is. is. She's someone I've admired before I even moved here. I follow her. She's just so versatile, and I have so much respect. So for we'll her. see what Aces. Yeah. 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 For yeah. sure. I would love to cover the Aces game. Oh, she said she's gonna give will. me a court side. So good. Oh, yeah. you know, I'm trying to say court side at the Aces. Yeah. <laughs> Legs out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tall girls unite. Well, too tall. I'm five seven, so I'm a little short. Well, that was one of my questions. Yeah. Five ten. Oh. But my last my questions is being in media. I mean, uh-huh. I know sometimes it's hard enough to have men take you seriously, but uh-huh. also when you are towering over them at times too. <laughs> do you find that there's a heart that give a hard time as far as conducting interviews or mm. trying to like have them take you seriously at some point? That's a good question. <laughs> um, it's funny because sometimes I'll take my shoes off. Yeah, yeah, because I, I wear I'm a boot girl. Yeah, I wear boots. Okay. all the time. Okay, um, and they might have a little heel on them. Sure. So I might take my shoes off just to, even aesthetically, you know, right. just so it doesn't look crazy. Not crazy on the camera view. Yeah, or yeah. But um, I have had a couple guys, like, just won't let it go. They're just <laughs> like, oh, man, you're going to make me look short. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, <laughs> do you want me to take my shoes right. off? And then they're like, no, no, no. Should I crouch not. down? Like, what do you need? <laughs> yeah. So, we can get you a box to stand on if you right, want. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, it's, 
so yeah, it's something that is definitely a topic of discussion on on a lot of <laughs> interviews with men and women. Yeah. Um, but they all they like it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's it, cool. Yeah. It's, it's always just a topic that they're like, whoa. Yeah. Oh, how, you're like, I, don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. they should just appreciate it, value it, because I look at the guys that dated models in the uh-huh, past. They were uh-huh. all shorter than the model. Like, yeah. when you just feel like, hey, I got a model on my Likely or something. because they brought, you know, some other things to the table. But then yeah. they get so in tune <laughs> with, too. like, you know, being pretty and being tall that yeah. they're not really concentrated on the content of what you're um, asking them. Um, yeah. Well, that, you know, I, I, pre- I come to my interviews very professional. You know, yeah. my, my personality is there, but yeah. the professionalism is there, too. Right. So, yeah. you know, off top, you're going to respect me. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So if you're attracted to me, that's fine. <laughs> but, you know, it, it never becomes a problem. It right. never becomes a problem. And, and with and being in media with the photographer as well, you know, you always kind of feel like you have that protection. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're with your photographer. It's right. not just you going into strange places. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I feel, I feel respected. Good. And plus you Boy, go in there knowing use. your stuff. So yeah. when you yeah. come in with facts and you know what yeah. you're talking about, they're mm-hmm. like, oh, she's real. She's serious. Yeah. It's not no play play. Also, also it's about making them feel comfortable, right? Yeah. right. You know, that is also, that's something I, I take seriously is making people that I'm talking to or interviewing feel like they're just with their friends chilling, you know, just hanging out, just, just chatting, just mm-hmm. chatting, like we're know? chatting right now. Just <laughs> chatting. This, this yeah. podcast setting is what I want to bring into the field right. or into TV. You know, it's just very casual, and that's yeah. what that's what Las Vegas now is too. You know, yeah. we're just having fun. I'm we're just mad really that is. I work, so I never get to. I don't. I worked in the daytime hours, so I don't get yeah. to ever catch it like that, like live. Oh no, yeah. it's great. It's a great show. <laughs> JC you. actually had me on one time for the fall fashion with oh, Forrest Griffin, yeah. the UFC fighter. So I had a really good time in your guys' studio. Okay, so you have to come back. I will <laughs> have to come there. back. You yeah, back. I definitely. <laughs> we, we will have to yeah. come back. Yes, like, let sure. us be guests on the Las Vegas. Let us sure. with for you sure. and Lindsay and talk fashion right? and sports, no, sports and everything. And fashion yeah. and sports, Absolutely. right? Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Have your people call my people. Okay, exactly. sounds like that. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> so we got a fight coming up this weekend. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you have a pick as far as it's Deontay Wilder, Tyson Ooh. Fury? This is the rematch, if you will, <laughs> the unfinished business fight going mm-hmm. down at MGM Grand. Yeah. They're both mm-hmm. undefeated. Uh, they had, got really chippy mm-hmm. this afternoon yeah, today. at their second press conference mm-hmm. to the point where one was calling one Big Mama, another well, one was questioning their faces. Th- yeah, and Shout one out to Gorilla Cross with yeah. some great footage. Great footage from what? that. And uh, Mike Dixon at uh, LV Sports Daily as well. Um, have you been following to know like what's no. going on? No, no, I'm not going. I'm not going to say. Yeah, you know, I, I pick no. no. That was, I have <laughs> not okay. been following, and that's that is okay. Totally okay. But I love boxing. I love boxing. And you that's, these are, that's as far as I go. And this is heavyweight. This it is, is like the big guy. Yes. Yes. That's what I yeah. love about WFC it. Yeah. These guys are 6'6". Six, 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 mm-hmm. Was it 6'9"? Six, six, nine. Nine. Yep. And you said UFC. No, 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 no. WBC. Oh, WBC. Yeah, WBC. Okay. Boxing okay. Championship. Okay. Yeah. So it is boxing. Yeah. Make sure I but you got to interview <laughs> right uh, Mia St. John, uh-huh. who's a female boxer, five-time champion. That's awesome. How was that? She is such a beautiful woman in spirit. She's got such a great energy about her and you know what she's gone through yeah so you look at her and you just you feel you feel for her but you also are inspired by her because she keeps going and she gives back and she and she's kind of making that now her fight is mental health so what she's doing for communities is great and she's she's just she's a great spokesperson for for that cause for that cause yeah she was really cool cool yeah and then I saw you throw an elbow oh, on one know, of your listen, videos. You were doing listen, a self-defense. I, it was women's self-defense yeah, episode. I, yes. She she had a sharp elbow. I <laughs> Listen. I you don't may, want her blocking you out. You don't want her blocking you out. I, I, you I you may or may not have teeth marks on my <laughs> elbows. Okay. I may or may not have teeth marks on my right elbow. <laughs> <laughs> that is my, that's my claim to, to college your ball. Your first battle born <laughs> injury. Battle yeah. Wound. yeah. You know, um, yeah. Oh no, my god! I'm, I'm a post player. Yeah, uh, our elbows are our gotta get down. weapons. Yeah, low key, low key. You gotta be slick. You gotta be slick with it, though. So, what's the future <laughs> hold for you? What is the next? Ooh. What do we want to do? Do we want to oh, write a man. book? Do we want to? I see book. I see just. I just see you doing big things. But yeah, what do you, you see yourself as far as your future self? What would you like? To you know what? I. I see my a book. Wow. Um, Why not? I would totally write a book. Yeah. I, I, writing is my passion. I will All write. Right. I will write a book. Hey. I, I will do that. Um, but I just see myself 
you know, I, I love my current position with, with Las Vegas now. And if I can do something like that for the rest of my life, I'm happy. That's amazing. You That's know? great. I'm happy. It's, it's entertaining, but it's also informing. It's, it's uplifting. It's um, inspiring. It's, it's also personally fun and inspiring. Um, so if I can do something like that, I'm good with that. And it looks like you love what you do. Yeah. Like everybody yeah. says she just lights love up and she talks I love about it. it. Like it's Thank just amazing. You. you just have a glow of like Thank I you. really enjoy it. And you, yeah. like I said, you got a great crew with you. They're yeah. all all time people. Yes. So and it's then pretty awesome. Do. Being now in Vegas, is there somebody that you've seen that's locally here or maybe is coming here with a show wise that you would love to interview? Like what? Like mm. where are you wanting to interview here? Ooh. Is there anybody with ticket that you're like ah yeah? want to interview I've, <laughs> I've done Shania oh Ooh, wow I did, okay. I did Sarah McLaughlin today actually. nice yeah, oh, she was nice. really sweet she was really sweet when I stood up she was like did you play basketball <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I yeah. like yeah I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did yeah I used it for something um who else would I I would love to interview JLo Oh, oh yeah, that would be a good. That one. would be a hot. That would be yeah, a hot. Get. That um, would be a I would want one. to just be like, can we go in the gym for a session? Yeah, just show me right. your routine, please. That right. and that is exactly <laughs> what we would want on yes. our show. Yes. Gym time with J Lo. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, I've interviewed Shin Lim. Have you guys seen his show? No, no his uh, magic show. No, he he won. I think America's Got Talent. Okay, okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did he do any magic with you? Yeah, we oh. did a whole segment, and he blew my mind. Him and Colin Cloud, they do a show together at the Mirage. Oh, nice. Um, okay, yeah. So check it out because listen, I'm still stressed from from trying to figure magic those tricks be out. Magic creeping me out. So well, I saw Seafood and Roy back in the day before yeah. the tiger incident and they made an elephant mm. disappear off the stage and it's still mind blowing on it how is. they made that <laughs> elephant lingers. disappear. It does linger. And I ask people questions like, how did that yeah. big Where elephant did it go? disappear off the stage? Was it real? I want to know. It is incredible what they do. And, and Shin Lim will tell you, it's not magic for him. It's sleight of hand. Okay. You know, so he's just, Quick with his hands, quick with it. Okay. I'm quick sure he would have been able to handle the ball really well <laughs> in his day, but yeah, no, that was I've I've been getting a really great um diverse palette, I guess you could say, oh, with um with the people I'm interviewing here. And what I love about the show is we get to do the entertainment, but I also love interviewing like community organizers yes. and and people who are doing things in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, you know, off the strip and outside of the entertainment. Which world. is what the locals really do want to know. Yeah, they want to know yeah. more about that, not the, you know, just And do you feel there's a sense of community here in I Vegas do. since you've moved here? I do. Okay. It, there is a huge one and it's stronger than I ever thought because, like I said, I would come here for weekends and be done. Right. Um, but so when I got here, I started to realize quickly that, you know, Vegas is, is a community. It's a growing, yeah. it's a thriving community, but also it's already, there's already a really strong foundation. We just didn't know about it. It's kind of like the best kept secret. You know, it's you come here and you have the strip, but you also okay. have yep. the residential areas. Residential areas. All the areas. Suburban areas. You're right. You know, you have you have the best of both worlds here. So yeah, because people really always assume it. that you live in Vegas, you're on the strip. I'm right. Like, yeah. Nobody lives. Or yeah. your parents were well, you know, and also you I, I, I you, can't you, even yeah. say it's the best kept secret because people <laughs> move in here left and right all day long mm -hmm. from LA, yeah. from everywhere. Yeah. So it's uh, they know now. Oh. They know now. So have you checked out our boys and our women's basketball team as far as the Rebels go? Oh, not yet. Not yet. No. Okay. Because no, your, your dad's jersey is hanging up there in the rafters. Yeah. I yes, it is. Yes, it is. One of I was there. You should have like an honorary seat there somewhere. Right. I should. We should, should talk to them about yeah. that. Yeah, we gotta talk to them about that. Why I need not? courtside seats at UNLV games and Aces games. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and Raider games. Hey, you're the courtside at Raiders. On, <laughs> on right field there path. On the field right path. On the You'll field. probably have that on the field path. Yeah, let me I get my that's media pass. Yeah, I, think, yeah, I think you're good on that, too. Right. And we're just gonna tag right along. Like, I know yeah. Rocky. Yeah, yeah we're Rocky. Like, we're all together. What's here. up? <laughs> good? Okay. Rock in Vegas. Rock in Vegas. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So where um, can everybody find you on the social yeah. media? So tip? at Rocky Theus, I keep it real simple for everybody. Okay. At Rocky Theus on Instagram, on Twitter. Um, you can follow the show at Las Vegas Now at, at LV Now TV on Instagram. Nice. Uh, at Las Vegas Now on Twitter. And yeah. And for those that are listening, it's R O Q U I. Yes. I know people think Rock and they're like, oh, R O. -C no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm not a puppy. No. Nope. Yeah. Not a boxer. Now, is Rocky <laughs> no, I love short? boxing. I'm is sorry. Rocky short for? Yes, it's short for Raquel. Raquel. Okay. I was named after Raquel Welch. Oh, yeah. really? Which, yes, I'm not That's mad at that. That's not bad. I'm not bad no, at that either. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but my mom, she she really just named me that 
just to call me Rocky. Now you're the oldest. <laughs> I've been Rocky since birth. Rocky since point. birth. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now are you the oldest out of your sibling? I am. I'm and then a, you had I'm a brother. That, three. And then you had a brother that went to Yale. No, oh, a, you didn't go a, to cousin. a cousin. A cousin that was a cousin yeah. on your picture. Yes. Oh, I thought yes, it was your yes, brother. Yes. I was about to say, people, man, people think that. The family. <laughs> people think yeah, that. Yeah, I was like, beast all in the family. Still yeah. beast all in the family. Yeah, I actually yeah. have I have a surgeon, wow. um, a surgeon cousin, his nice. brother. He went to Yale, um, Tommy. So the surgeon is Taylor. Tiana is, you know, out here running productions in nice. LA. She's wow. working for The Bachelor now. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, my brother and sister are doing their thing. My brother's 25. Sister's 21 at U of A. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. U of A. Yeah, U of A. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got a lawyer cousin. Yeah. You're my family. You're my family. family. You're you family. He's know? doing some big We're things. Doing some things. Yeah. You know, all of it. We're all so versatile. And, so, yeah. that, and that's a testament to my parents, you know, yeah. to our all of our parents and our grandparents. They've they really raised us to be our true selves. And um, so that's, that's, I think, what my message is. You know, when Would that be your message for the young ladies that are up yeah. and coming to be authentic Absolutely. and be themselves? Absolutely. That okay. is my number one message. All right. All right. Yeah. Love Thank it. So it's much gotten much. me this yeah. far. Yeah. yeah. You can, you can yeah. get Hello. paid to be yourself. Right. And to, and to love what you do. So. That's to do traffic with no experience. <laughs> right. No, and that traffic. And that that is was where funny. They were like, we're just going to throw you in the traffic. Yeah. And you're like, like what? Okay, and like, that's where that resilience and uh, there you yeah. go. hard work comes there from. There you go. I'm telling you. Going with the flow. Wow. Going with the flow. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Rocky, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Oh, and same, I thank you same. so much from your busy schedule yes. because I know we were kind of chatting back and forth. You chatted with yeah. Mel a little bit. You chatted with me on the Instagram mm -hmm. about, you know, you know, let me check my schedule. Then I realized I saw your Instagram and you were out of town. I was like, oh, she may not be able to come oh, on. No, I was but when you back. responded, I was like, yeah. yes, girl, yes. Thank you. Ready to yes. And I can, I'll come back anytime. We've oh, got, got to. We've got, got to. We've got so much more we'll to talk about. We'll stay in touch now. Yeah, we're now for friends. sure. Yeah, we're yeah. friends now. Yes, so we'll see you guys like outside of podcast. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we'll we'll hey, invite you out. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm new to town, so you got to show me We've got to show you got to show me where to go. Man. The place to go. We got to tell you. We got to show you the scene. For sure. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Hey, you guys, we are out of here. It's been quite an episode. We thank you for joining joining us make sure you stay tuned follow us subscribe share the podcast yes. share share and share is caring we're out, is caring. <laughs> we're out guys <laughs>